Well, welcome back to The Witness. I am your host, Spins Asunder. And I'm still trying to figure out the puzzles that are in this, this weird shrine looking place that will unlock the door to the tower in the in the town. These. But I still have no clue how to solve them, of course. Because there doesn't appear to be anything environmentally that's just around. Uh... I don't see anything specific in the shadows. There's no sound cues, so those are still a bit of a mystery to me. Must be some steps that I'm missing. So I'm gonna look around a little more and uh, see what else I can find first that maybe will give me a clue as to how to solve them. And because my pathway got blocked to go in the other way, I have to go around to the back up here. And maybe there's something on the back of that, I don't know. It was weird that it just blocked me. Oh, there's another obelisk. I don't think it's humming. I wonder why some of them are humming and some of them are not. Uh, uh, I don't think I can get down there. I think it gives you these weird overlooks just to be like, it might mean something, and it totally doesn't. It's just a, a cool spot to look at. Um, but this was on the back. Okay, so these are the different sized ones. There were, what was what was the other puzzle? I know I came across one other one that had different sized ones and I was just like, I don't know how to solve this. Is it just do the small one first? Is that is that how it's going to be? Is that do them in order? Well, I can't do that one first. Yeah, I can't hit this. This one has to kind of be hit first. Otherwise I can't get back. Right? Right? Do I only have to hit one? Of, of each? Come on. Of each size? No, it doesn't like that. Uh, do the middle ones even matter? Do they have to be confined? No. Of course it has to make me do this over and over. This one's a tricky one, because I can either do it here, or I can do it here. But, I can't do both. But I can't go around, because uh, this one is a Why are there bird sounds here? Is this a different sound? It is. I know. So high is the small one. These are sound cues. Normal, normal, high, normal, low. Normal, normal, high, normal, low. There. Okay, I never would have known that these were sound clues. What? Okay, I think it's high, middle, high, low. That. High, middle, high, low. Yep, high, middle, high, low. Do that. Do that again. Okay, I think it's high... High, high, low, middle, low. Low, middle, low. There. Come on. You never know which bird to listen to is the problem. I think it's high, low, high, low, middle. Is that impossible? I can't do this and then the other one. Alright, I think it's the other bird, so it should be this instead. Yes. I was listening to the wrong bird. I guess only one is possible, which makes it so much worse. Alright, where did this go? Those are also a little annoying because you have to wait for the birds to repeat themselves. Oh man, this is a maze. Okay. 
Okay. Bamboo maze. I should not sprint through this one. Ooh, I like that. That's awesome. I want that. I want that. That's like a really cool dead bonsai or whatever. But that is awesome. I don't know why this is here. There's nothing else in there. Besides that that one. This one. There's kind of like an ominous sound coming off it. Weird. Okay. Um, keep going, I guess. Keep going. Okay. Well, there's a laser here. That That's cool. I can open a shortcut, too. Barely. Okay, there. That's open. But it's laser time. I'm not going to wait for this one. It's going to shoot when it's going to shoot. Because, uh, <laughs> they take too long to fire. Well, there it is. It's still not ready to go, though. Shoot it. Maybe? There, it finally shot it. Good. Okay. Another laser down. I still don't know how many there are. Uh, is this the same plat? No, it was a lower one that I crossed. Yeah, I crossed that one. This is a different one. Mm, I could have gone up the stairs. I just didn't. This goes back down here. Oh. Another exit, unfortunately. I can't do anything with that. A wasted switchback. And another obelisk. But I can't tell if it's on me because there's a waterfall right there, which is very pretty. But I can cross again up here. Handy that. I don't know why, because it just brings me back here, which was where I was going to go anyway. But now I can get to this place. Could I have just gone up here from the bottom? I could have. Oh well. Whatever. I thought that was too steep to climb. What's up here? Another laser. Okay. I thought the flowers would be a, a, a puzzle mechanic. I bet they are. Uh, I don't know how yet, but I bet they are. Okay, let's over here first. Then I'll go back down. These are probably the shortcuts. Um, wasn't I already here? I was already here. I could have gone all the way up there before. Did I know that? I don't remember. Did I know that? I don't know what I know anymore. I came up this way before, didn't I? Did. I don't need to do that. I probably just missed the path. Didn't even notice that it went up. I do that. What goes up this way? Uh, up the precarious tree, I guess. Can I? No. Or not. Up the mountain. This is the, the the beckoning lady. Reaching up to the clouds. That's cool. I can see the lasers pretty well. Probably another one there, and uh, maybe over there. And uh, I don't know how many. Lots. Getting very high up now. It's snowy. Interesting. Whoa. This is the laser place. I finally found it. They're taking pictures, it's so awesome. Um, this person's not as happy. I'm not sure what's going on in this one. She looks very angry, and he's begging her not to push him off the cliff and clutching a book to his chest, which may or may not be the Bible because he's about to die. That, that's my interpretation of this. I don't know why she's mad, and I don't know why he's being killed. These people are also... I mean, is that another laser? It sure looks like it. I've already unlocked half of it, somehow. Uh, that's a strange expression. Whatever. I guess that's the final one to unlock. I don't know why you're banging on that thing. Doesn't really tell me how many there are. Weird. What is this, though? That's the river. Why is there a river path? 
What does it do to the river? I don't know. That's weird. I solved the river. The river is now solved. Yes. That that's okay. Well, there doesn't appear to be much I can do up here yet, but now I know how to get here, because I'm guessing that's the end game once I've sold all the areas. It's out there to at least be an audio log or something up there. But no. Just a bunch of stone people. This place looks cool though. Are you gonna teach me a different one? No, these are ones I already know. Uh I'm not sure if I can get down there. But this one I already know. Uh, like that. Uh, that. Okay. Flowers. Okay. That's a little different. That's, a little, that's closed. Wasn't sure. Um, these are flowers, aren't they? Is it to separate them again? Maybe? Separate all the colors? Because they have green, white, and purple, which is not what I was expecting. There's green and there's purple, but the other one's red and maybe orange, not white. Okay, maybe I just didn't isolate them correctly. It's, I could have. Just didn't. I don't know why. There's something wrong with me. Hmm, nope, this what did not do it this way. There. Do they have to be together though? Is the question. Can I make two different groups? Like that. Not like that. Like that. I can. Alright, so they're basically just like the black and white ones, they're just uh, more colors. That's that's not too difficult. These are why doesn't that work? Oh right. These aren't actually separated from the other blues on the match. Go all the way up like that. My bad. Nope, can't do that. I can do this though. Almost. That. No. There. Check. No. Not quite. So close. And yet so far. Yeah, I think. Good. This first. This works. Almost. Let's nice separate those. This? No. They're all almost. Not quite. This? Alright, this one works. Okay. No, it doesn't, because the blue and the red then. This one. Yes. Okay. That one took me a little longer than it should have. But those don't really add a lot. It's just more colors. The same concept. Thought they'd be more complicated. And... And... How can I possibly divide both right here and right here? Because once I go here, I can't go here. Is it color groups? Am I allowed to do that? Keep the blues together, you know? So the flowers, I think, are telling me that blue and purple can be grouped. Is that right? Considering that there's a blue and purple flower. I don't know. I can go up here. No, I can't. Nothing up here. Oh no. I think I know what it means. There's a screen here that changes the color, of course, because if you look through blue screen, it won't be that color anymore. The blue purple is now blue. I have to look through it in the screen. That's that's the real pattern. If you look at it here, it's different. So it's actually just red and green and black on the top. So let's see. Aqua is green. Pink is red. And blue is black. So I just need to do this. Yep. Yeah. What's this one? Those four groups. 
easy enough, I believe. It's just... Come on, mouse. Do the thing. This. It's not that. Why is it not that? Are these a different... Yeah, wh how do I know which screen to look through? That's the thing. The green screen shows that. This one shows a totally different pattern. Blues and blacks. That would be these instead. Okay. So how do I know? Because this, this was blue. Why do I know it was blue? I don't know. I looked through both. They were both solvable. If this was green, it'd be that, but... I don't know. I'll try both. Nope. Blue actually doesn't help much, so... We have to combine them. I probably have to combine them. No, so those are all black, those are the same, and those are the same. Is that what it is now? Yep, that's what it was. I had to use both for that one. Weird. Oh, they're playing with the light. That's not cool. What does this one do? It lets the sunshine in, I guess. Am I supposed to go with the sunshine version? I am. And this one is the darkness version? Probably. That's weird. These are weird. Okay. What's done is done, though. This kind of hurts your eyes to look at. It's me. Too many, too many vibrant colors that are mixed wrong. Kind of giving me a bit of a headache. It's not good. Okay. Okay. What? What have I done? Where even am I? Can I solve this one as is? Or is it even connected? I don't think that's right. I think that'll be different. Can I turn off the lights, maybe? What's up here? No more stairs. Ow! So much blue. So much blue. Wow. That's intense. Okay. Maybe I can see it better through the window down here. I can't even see that puzzle through here. I am not kidding when I say that gives me a headache too. That is hard to look at when the colors are that intense. Ugh. I guess I need to figure it out based on how they look here. Is there a section that gives it red light? Maybe I actually have to think about the colors here. Oh, there's another. What does this one do? Because that one wasn't there before. Or was it? Because the red room is the one with the actual puzzle, so I need to know how red light affects it, I guess. Man, this hurts my eyes. I have to come back for this one, because I can't stand being in this room for any longer, because I have a headache. So, I'm going to do something else for the rest of this episode, and I'll be back when it's more doable. Okay, so to kind of kill the rest of the time in this episode, I'm going to put in the other pattern here and uh, see what lecture it gives me this time. So the pattern should be this. And so, by a backhand and upside down argument, was predicted that there is in carbon a level at 7.82 million volts, and then experiments in the laboratory with carbon show indeed that there is. And therefore, the existence in the world of all these other elements is very closely related to the fact that there is this particular level in carbon. But the position of this particular level in carbon seems to us, after knowing the physical laws, to be a very complicated accident of 12 complicated particles interacting. So I used to illustrate by this example that an understanding of the physical laws doesn't give you an understanding in a, a sense of a understanding significance of the world in any way. The details of real experience are very far often from the fundamental laws. There are, in a way of speaking in the world, 
we have a way of discussing the world which you could call, a, we discuss it at various hierarchies or levels. Now, I don't mean to be very precise, uh, this as a level, as another level, as another level, but I will indicate by describing a set of ideas to you, just one after the other, what I mean by hierarchies of ideas. For example, at one end, we have the fundamental laws of physics. Then we invent other terms for concepts which are approximate, who have, we believe, the ultimate explanation in terms of the fundamental laws. For instance, heat. Heat is supposed to be the jiggling, and it's just a word for a, a hot thing, is just a word for a mass of atoms which are jiggling. For all that, fundamentally, we should think of the atoms jiggling. But for a while, if we're talking about heat, we sometimes forget about the atoms jiggling. Just like when we talk about the glacier, we don't always think of the hexagonal ice snowflakes which originally fell. Another example of the same thing is a salt crystal. Looked at fundamentally, it's a lot of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But we have this concept, salt crystal, which carries a whole pattern already of fundamental interactions, or idea like pressure. Now, if we go higher up from this, in another level, we have properties of substances like refractive index, how light is bent when it goes through something, or surface tension, the fact that the water tends to pull itself together, is described by a number. I remind you that we have to go through several laws down to find out that it's the pull of the atoms and so on. But we still say surface tension, and don't worry when we're discussing surface tension of the inner workings always. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Go on, up in the hierarchy. With the water, we have the waves, and we have a thing like a storm. We have a word for storm, which represents an enormous mass of phenomena. Or sunspot, or star, which is an accumulation of things. And it's not worthwhile always to think of it way back. In fact, we can't, because the higher up we go, the we have too many steps in between, each one of which is a little weak, and we haven't thought them all through yet. If we go up in this hierarchy of complexity, we get to things like frog, or nerve impulse, which you see is an enormously complicated thing in the physical world, involving an organization of matter in a very elaborate complexity. And then we go on, we come to things, words, and concepts like man and history or political expediency and so <laughs> forth, which is a series of concepts that we use to understand things at an ever higher level. And going on, we come to things like evil and beauty and hope. Now, which end is nearer to the ultimate creator or the ultimate? And this, or if I make a religious metaphor, which end is nearer to God? Beauty and hope or the fundamental laws? I think that uh, the right way, of course, is to say that the whole structural interconnections of the thing uh, is the thing that we have to look at. And that the sequence of hierarchy, that all the sciences and all the efforts, not just the sciences, but all the efforts of intellectual kind, are to see the connections of the hierarchies is to connect beauty to history is to connect history to man's psychology, the man's psychology to the working of the brain, the brain to the neural impulse, the neural impulse to the chemistry, and so forth, up and down, both ways. And today we cannot, and there's no use making believe we can, draw carefully a line all the way from one end of this thing to the other. In fact, we've just begun to see that there is this relative hierarchy. And so I don't think either end is nearer to God's. And it's to stand at either end and to walk out off the end of the pier only, hoping out in that direction is the complete understanding, is a mistake. And to stand with evil and beauty and hope, or to stand with the fundamental laws, hoping that way to get a deep understanding of the whole world, with that aspect alone, is a mistake. And it is not sensible either for the ones who specialize at one end and the ones who specialize at the other end to have such... Uh, disregard for each other. They don't, actually, but the people say they do. So. <laughs> but that actually the great mass of workers in between connecting one step to another are improving all the time our understanding of the world, both from working at the ends and working in the middle. And uh, in that way, we are gradually understanding this connection, this tremendous world of interconnecting hierarchies.
if you expected science to give all the answers to the wonderful questions about what we are, where we're going, what the meaning of the universe is, and so on, then I think you could easily become disillusioned and then look for some mystic answer to these problems. How a scientist can take a mystic answer, I don't know, because the whole spirit is to understand. Well, never mind that. Any, I don't understand that. But anyhow, uh, if you think of it, though, I, the way I think of what we're doing is we're exploring. We're trying to find out as much as we can about the world. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. If you say, but your problem is why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question, you may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. But I don't look at it. My, my interest in science is to simply find out about the world. And the more I find out, the better it is I like to find out. Uh, there are very remarkable mysteries about the fact that we're able to do so many more things than apparently animals can do, and other questions like that. But those are mysteries I want to investigate without knowing the answer to them. And so altogether, I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large, because they seem to be too simple, too, too, too connected to too local, too provincial. The earth, he came to the earth. One of the aspects of God came to the earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he, it isn't in proportion. Anyway, it's no use arguing. I can't argue it. I'm just trying to tell you why the scientific views that I have do have some effect on my beliefs. And also another thing. Uh, has to do with the question of how do you find out if something's true? And if you have all these theories of, of the different religions, have all different theories about the thing, then you begin to wonder. Once you start doubting, just like you're supposed to doubt, you ask me, is the science true? We say, no, no, we don't know what's true. We're trying to find out. Everything is possibly wrong. Start out understanding religion by saying everything is possibly wrong. Let us see. As soon as you do that, you start sliding down an edge, which is hard to recover from. And so when the, with the scientific view, or well, my father's view, that we should look to see what's true and what may, be, may not be true, once you start doubting, which I think is, to me is a very fundamental part of my soul, is to doubt and to ask. And when you doubt and ask, it gets a little harder to believe. You see, one thing is I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything. And there are many things I don't know anything about, such as whether it means anything to ask why we're here and what the question might mean. I might think about it a little bit. If I can't figure it out, then I go to something else. But I don't have to know an answer. I don't have to, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in the mysterious universe without having any purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell, possibly. It doesn't frighten me. Well, that was uh, a lot longer than I was expecting. I thought it would just be the one long talk, but it actually ended up being uh, two of them. So there's a lot to unpack there, and I'm probably way over time for this episode now. But um, the first guy I thought was, was very insightful. That's, that's a, a very um, all-encompassing, as it should be, view to take of the pursuit of knowledge in general. Uh, not just science, but all knowledge. He even included artistic knowledge and interpersonal things all all of them fall on the same spectrum if you if you break it down like that and that's 
extremely insightful. I think that was a very valuable lecture. Again, given that I still think these lectures should not be in this game because it is not the correct medium, but because they are, I'm going to talk about them. And for those of you who don't care to watch the lectures anyway, you can just skip all this and not hear my thoughts on it anyway. So I might as well give them. And uh, so, yes, I agree with the first guy uh, to, to basically every point. He, he lays that out in a very, very beautiful way, in my opinion. Connecting the entire world is a wonderful way of trying to explain it. That's making connections is one of the most logical ways to try to explain something as complex as the entire world and all the facets of the way it manifests itself. Uh, the second guy was obviously more biased than the first one. He was definitely bashing religion. Um, I think, I mean, I understand his point of uh, that you, you can't really accept a lot of the premises that religion proposes because of the fact that they are faith-based. There is no evidence for most of the things that are in most religion. And uh, if you look at it from the the perspective of a scientific mindset like he said and you're only looking at evidence then yes those are ridiculous notions that no one should believe but when you look at it from its own premise of faith uh, being the basis of actual uh, realization of the concepts that are in those religions then uh, that actually does make some sense because if you put your faith in a specific thing, you will think differently because you've made a conscious choice to do so. Whether the um, metaphors or whatever you want to call them, the symbolism, the stories, any of it, whether any of that actually happened really doesn't matter if you look at it in the per from the perspective of just putting faith in certain ideals. So... I, I kind of have to disagree with him that they are ridiculous with without um, any without any doubt that they're just something you should never believe because it, it depends on your perspective and uh, I think that's probably why they connected it to the first guy's talk because perspective does matter and the second guy I don't think uh, was looking at it in the same light he was he was in a way biased by his um, willingness to only look at it from what his belief of a scientific perspective was and not from the faith perspective. And uh, keep keep in mind that I am saying all of this, in my uh, opinion, is uh, coming from... I classify myself as an agnostic, so I, I don't believe in any of the religious things, but... I also don't believe that there's any reason to accept that they are completely false either. I think any of them or all of them are definitely plausible, just as much as anything else is plausible. We simply don't understand. So um, at the end of the day, uh, believe what you want to believe, pursue what you want to pursue, and uh, that that's really about it. If you try to wrap your head around what should be or what truly is the correct way to view everything, you'll never get anywhere, and it'll just consume you because there's there's just no way. We, we are not built to comprehend on that level of complexity. It's just not going to happen. You might get halfway there if you spent many lifetimes, but we can't even do that yet because we haven't solved our own mortality. So, uh, yeah, it's just not going to happen. So believe what you want to believe, pursue whatever you want to pursue, and try to be happy with the knowledge that you do know and accept that you don't know even a percentage of it because there's just that much to learn about the universe, the world, people, any concept you could study for your whole life and never be a true master of it because... The level of complexity in this universe is just insane. So, I know I have talked for way too long, and so have they, so fine. I add my own lecture on the end of this. 
So anyone who has actually made it through all of these insights, I like I said, I definitely enjoy philosophy and, and debates about how the world is and how people are and how everyone should think. Th those are really interesting to me, and I enjoy those types of discussions. So if you also do, and if you listen to all this or some of it, feel free to add your own two cents in the comments or, or join in the conversation, and I, I will probably respond. And, uh, yeah, who knows? But I find it interesting. I still don't think it should be in the game because this is a puzzle game. And, yes, the universe is puzzling, but different media. This is too deep for a game, but th those were very valuable ones. I, I, I liked that I saw them. I just don't like that I saw them here. But it is cool to uh, to give my response to any viewers who care. So I guess I'll put value in that. And with that, this episode is probably very, very much longer than it should be. I will leave it here. Many thanks for watching this video and listening to this video, more like. But for now, the lectures are over. So until next time, may your spoons remain.